today we are starting with let God arise. The Balaam spirit is the spirit of divination. I want to remind you by way of um, definition that the Balaam spirit is a spirit of divination which pronounces curses on God's people and turns them against him with the aim of obtaining a reward and maintaining his spiritual control over the people by making them commit idolatry and fornication. So let me repeat this definition. That the Balaam spirit is a spirit of divination. Everybody say it's a spirit of divination. Come on, shout it again. It's a spirit of divination. It's a spirit of divination which pronounces curses on God's people. So curses are real. I like something Balak sent the message to Balaam and said. I know that anybody you curse is cursed. And anybody you bless is blessed. Curses are real. Curses are real. There are people who can tell you never succeed and you never succeed. And there are people who will tell you you succeed and you succeed. Curses are real. You hear people they go and work hard, go and do this, go and do that. I like working hard. I'm a hard worker. I'm not a lazy person. But blessings don't come from just working. Blessings don't come from just working. So it pronounces curses on God's people. And you see, you can be cursed with sickness. And you can also be blessed with health. Many of the sicknesses that people carry are curses. Many of the sicknesses people carry are curses. And all of us, or let me say many of us, there are times we get angry about something and we curse people. We curse people. Curses are a normal part of life. And for every one of you under the sound of my voice, those of you who are believers and you are born again and you speak in tongues and you carry the word of God, any negative thing you speak about somebody is a curse. No, if you say you don't like somebody, it's a curse. You say, ah, this person, it will not be well with them. It's a curse. That is why you have to be very, very careful when you are walking around people whose words carry weight. You want to be very careful. In fact, even if they open their mouth and say you are stupid, it's a curse. By the time they say you are a fool, ah, it means you are doomed. Huh? When they say you are, you are not a member of this house, I don't even know. Even that one is a curse. Peter opened his mouth and told Simon the sorcerer, said, you have no part or lot in this matter. And it was a curse. So they curse people. And the reason the ba- when the Balaam spirit does that, the aim is to obtain a reward. So Balaam curses people in order to obtain a reward. So the Balaam spirit is always looking for food, money, house, land. He's cursing in order to to obtain a reward or number two to maintain spiritual control over the people because Balaam at this time was the was the prophet of the area co- controlling everything and now Moses is coming and Balaam is envious of Moses' prophetic position so Balak is envious of the political power of Israel and Balaam is intimidated and insecure and envious about the prophetic power of Moses. So one is envious of political power, the other one is envious of prophetic power. And they forge an alliance. So it's like you come and curse these people. When you curse them, nobody take your position as a prophet. And me too, when you curse them, nobody will take my position as a political head of this area. So both of them had an interest in controlling power over the people. And the way the Balaam spirit operates is to tempt people to commit idolatry and then number two, to commit fornication. Wherever you see the multiplication of fornication, adultery, the spirit of Balaam is at work. 
it goes it, it, it goes together fornication uh, adultery they they operate together when the spirit of Balaam is operative now so if you realize that you are a man or a woman and you are into idol worship um, witchcraft the spirit of Balaam may be at work or maybe you have a very weak sexuality sexual life you sleep with this and sleep with that and sleep with that and sleep with that and sometimes you see people they justify all these things like polygamy they justify it one man can have two wives I, I, I don't even know how they do it you are with this one in the night the next day you are seeing another um, structure in front of you the following day you are moving towards another person and then <laughs> seriously and then people justify it and then others are in marriages and they've got mistresses and girlfriends here and there and they are just messing themselves up and you go to our churches and the spirit of fornication is just there people don't care who they sleep with in our churches anymore you go to our churches and the idolatry is there and the drunkenness and the and the misbehavior people just misbehave and it's a spirit it's like a spell on us as a people and i'm praying that anybody under the sound of my voice today who has imbibed the doctrine of Balaam. And you see, this doctrine of Balaam, sometimes when it operates from the pulpit, the pulpit never talks about fornication, against fornication. It doesn't talk against drunkenness. It doesn't talk against adultery. I mean, if you want, you listen to the messages these days that people preach. Even messages that come from prophets. How many times do our prophets really rebuke us about sin? If you want, listen to a lot of the prophetic messages. A lot of the prophets and the pastors and the teachers don't talk about sin. And that is because I suspect that many times even the pastors and the prophets and the teachers and the evangelists and the apostles themselves are guilty. How can you talk about fornication when you yourself are one? Why no grab a phone? You cannot talk about drunkenness when you yourself you, you, you drink alcohol. And you can't talk about adultery. Now, can you imagine you face a very, very huge church? And you are talking about adultery. And you the pastor. You have a girlfriend in the church. How are you going to say things like that? So our churches are seriously compromised. Strange fires are burning on the altars. And the church of Jesus Christ is polluted. And in the midst of all these things, we are prophesying. We are speaking big language. We are making declarations. We are fasting. We are praying. I pray in Jesus' name that the church of Jesus will be clean. That we will come to the place where the church will be holy and people god's people will be more serious with their life and you know what let's remove this filth from the church let's let's remove the garbage from the church let's let's take the idolatry and let's take the sin out of the church because it is making the church powerless and it is all a manifestation of the balaam spirit politicians pastors businessmen forge alliances to destroy others um, so for, you know I have this co I have this opponent who is competing with me in the business can you take this offering and pray with me and when they are saying pray with me what they are saying is kill somebody pastor destroy them destroy them and their businesses and the pastor too receives the reward of divination and swearing at people cursing them Balaks and Balaam, they come together to destroy innocent souls. Sometimes they are destroying children's lives, they are destroying people. Now, prayer, purity, power are the three forces Israel employed in dealing with the Balaam spirit. You cannot deal with Balaam spirit through negotiation and compromise. No, you can't deal with it through negotiation and compromise. Anybody who wants to deal with the Balaam spirit has to confront it. And I will show you that as the days go by, I will show you that without confrontation, you cannot deal with the Balaam spirit. And we are looking at the prayer first. First of all, let's find out what is prayer? What is prayer? Prayer is the supernatural ability to prevail on God in heaven to act on earth. So God is in heaven, but with prayer, you prevail on God. To act on earth it means without our prayer few things will happen on earth 
without a prayer, a few things will happen. If you want things to happen on earth, somebody has to pray. If nobody prays, nothing will happen. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and see their face, my face, and pray, then I will hear from heaven. The spiritual climate of a place depends on the level of the prayer of the people. If the people are prayerful, the heaven opens. When they don't pray, the heaven is shut. No wonder the devil is so angry with believers when, when they pray. As soon as people start praying, as soon as people start praying, you see the devil is so angry. And you see occultic people, people that are in the occult and practice witchcraft, you see their reaction. It is, it's almost like you have thrown tiger ants on them. Prayer is a supernatural ability to prevail on God in heaven to act on earth. It is the key weapon in dealing with the Balaam spirit. That means no matter how intelligent, how prosperous, how forceful you are, until you engage the weapon of prayer, you cannot deal with the Balaam spirit. The Balaam spirit is an unseen force. And that is why prayer is the most effective means of dealing with it. Because you can't see it with your eyes. The spirit is unseen in the sense that you don't see the person who is dispatching the missiles against you. Right now, anybody that is attacking you, you don't know. And that's why God gives us the capacity to speak in other tongues. Because somebody's attacking you, you don't even know. Somebody's launching missiles at you, you don't know. Now, anybody who has preached in this church before, anybody who has preached here, I'm talking about desert pastors, anybody who has preached before, will tell you that there are times some things hidden in the pulpit and they don't even know where the things coming from. Anybody who has preached before. I remember that there's one of our pastors who I made preach here. And the person, after the first one, the reaction, things started happening to her. She went home practically sick. Because there are some of the evil people who come to the church. And while you are standing at the pulpit, they are busy throwing missiles. That is why. If somebody stands behind this pulpit for years, it means that the person is well in bullet, bulletproof. It means the person is No, because they fire, they fire the missiles. They, they fire the missiles. And it's not only our pulpit. Many churches, the thing is there. Our, our churches, there are witches in our churches. I've been telling you, there are witches and diviners in our churches. A lot of the people sitting in our churches are not correct. Because if the people in our churches were all clean, all these churches would have exploded by now. There are people that are planted in churches and their aim is to stop the church from growing. Their aim is to stop people. Sometimes, some people, their aim in the church is to stop people from giving or even offerings. So, during offering, there are people that can be in the agape and their aim is to stop you from singing. Some people can join the prayer warriors and their aim is to infiltrate the prayer warriors and stop them from praying. Some people can infiltrate the camp of the pastors and their aim is to dampen the spirit of the pastors. And then the very wicked and evil ones, they sit in the church and they throw, they throw, um, what is the name? Missiles of disease. And then some two come into the church with the Balaam spirit. And they are men and they are women. And they are also women. And their aim is to seduce people to commit fornication and adultery. No, say they can enter the church and their aim is to sleep with the girls. I've seen that spirit where one man can sit in a church and sleep with about three or four people or five girls. Of course, normally over here, if you see it happen and the person is still in the church, it's because I don't know. When I hear it, I sack them from their house. No, 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 I don't, I don't allow that kind of, that kind of, that kind of um, foolishness to be operating in the church. That one person is just lying down, or uh, sleep with that one, go and sleep with this. Or even sleep with one person. Get up, build in the church. Somebody said, what language is that? Go and, go and interpret. 
There are some of the things I can say it in Frafra, but saying it in English, the interpretation could be different. But, you know, people just, and then you see some other girl to will come to the church, just sleep with men. Eh? I can't go into details, but look, even here in this church, there was a girl who slept with about five men in this church. No, five. I'm not joking. No. And I know all, all the men she slept with, and I know the girl. Someone said, ah, ah. Daddy, how did you know? She just said, told me. I confronted her, and she listed them. So some of you who she has slept with, I know all of you. I only see you, but I do like I haven't seen anything. But I, but I know you. She mentioned your names. Pa, 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 pa. And when I look at you, too, I know the thing is true because of the way you walk. <laughs> Somebody says, so you didn't tell the men anything. No, I confronted them. Oh, do you see me? See, <laughs> here's such a thing I'm required. I call them, hey, have you tasted... Of the evil tree. Hey! Some said, Well, I, <laughs> we did it. Some too said, Well, I did it never. <laughs> I like the way Joe is looking at me. So, Pastor Kegan at the Beba Kazin Kunya, Niba I just spoke, I was a Sidia. Bakunya, Bakunya. So, maybe they're asking, So, Daddy, why do you ask things like this? Don't you feel shy? No, 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 I don't. In fact, there's nothing I want to ask you, I can't ask you. Amen. I'm like that. Amen. And if I want to ask you something, I'll ask you. If you see I'm not asking you, it means I have given up on you, and I know you are going to hell, and I cannot do anything about it. So that one, I will leave you to go there quietly on your own. But if I know there's a possibility I can save you, so there are things. This one I didn't say another church. I said here. One woman cleared five. Somebody say, has she stopped? I don't know. Yeah. We got one of them in a certain office. The person sat in that office. And the men who came to the office to come and look for, they, they came to patronize a product. She will be seducing the men who come there. When you sit in front of her, she will make the eyes like this. And the men will run away. And they say, hey, this girl who is in this place, if you joke with her, you are on the ground. Now, all that is there. Balaam spirit. And as I go on, this week is going to be interesting. That's why there's no music. Because of what I'm carrying. I knew what I was carrying. That's why I said no music. Because I don't want you to dance these words away. The one can move. The words will enter you. This this week is not a week for for singing and dancing. No, no, no. It's a week for purging. All the messages I'm bringing are purgatives and enemies. By the time we finish, if only you can clap, the church will be clean. The church will be clean. We just we just mess up with our eternal um, life and our destiny. So the Balaam spirit also invokes demons and curses against you so that you can only counteract it with spiritual force. The kind of prayer that you use to deal with the Balaam spirit must be strategic and it must be compared, it must be combined with fasting. The reason why fasting must be involved in dealing with the Balaam spirit is that Balaam's spirit deals with idolatry and fornication. And fasting is the only thing that can deal with this flesh. Because the idolatry or the meat offered to idols, idolatry and the fornication and the adultery, they are things that deal with this flesh. And the thing that can handle the flesh is the fasting. So if you even pray, but you don't add fasting to the prayer, you cannot deal with the Balaam's spirit. Anybody who can fast can kill any lust in your body. Sexual lust, lust for food, lust for alcohol, lust for even, even political power, lust for anything, not lust for material things, money, anything. If you fast, 
you can destroy the spirit of lust. I pray that this week and next week left for the fasting and prayer, may the Lord grant unto you the power to fast until we finish. Jesus told us as his disciples, could you not wait with me for one hour? And then he also said, men ought to pray, but not to faint. May somebody under the sound of my voice not faint. May you have the capacity in the name of Jesus Christ to continue fasting until we are done. Come on, clap your hands and give God the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Can I hear somebody shout an amen in the building? Amen. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Now, so here is Balaam cursing the people. The man stands on the, he built these altars. He and Balak, they built the altar. And as they built the altar, they were cursing the people of Israel as they came. And I don't think Israel even knew that somebody was cursing them. Who knows? Maybe these curses and wars were one of the reasons why they spent 40 years in the wilderness. A journey that would have taken them 11 days to travel. They took a longer route. And apart from taking the longer route, there were a lot of delays because they were fighting many battles. They were, they were fighting a lot of battles. They fought battles. And I also believe that the curses were affecting them. Oh, some of you, what, what is following you is a curse. Sit down and deal with it. The, the thing is a curse. Sit down and deal with it. it. It's a curse. Pray and deal with it. It's a curse. Stop blaming people. Stop blaming people and pray. Stop blaming people and pray. Stop blaming people and pray. You know, in our families and in our communities, when things are not going well with people, they blame others. They blame their geographical location. They blame where they stay. They blame their pastors. In churches, they blame their pastors. They blame, they blame, they blame, um, what is their name? They blame the government. They blame the district chief executive. They blame the chief of the town. They blame everybody for their problems. You can only prosper in life when you realize that your destiny is in God's hands. It's not in the hands of anybody. So they are cursing them. And they can curse you with all kinds of things. They can curse you. You can be cursed. Listen, even your anger can be a curse. Jacob told his children, Simeon and Rebu, he said, curse be their anger. They are cursed because in their anger, they dug down a well, a wall, I beg your pardon. So you realize that you have anger that is destroying walls and pulling everything around your life down. And you are never increasing. You are never breaking through in life. The thing is a curse. You are broke. You are poor. It's a curse. There are people that cannot hold on to one job because of anger. They will get angry with every boss and they will walk out of the work. I remember one day somebody told me something. I was really provoked. Aye. The guy annoyed me. He annoyed me seriously. That was during the time we lost our children. Then a certain man called me and told me, he said, Reverend, next time don't do that again. I said, ah, what did I do? He said, I went and preached for the government. That is why my children died. I said, oh, which government? He said, oh, you went and preached at the National Thanksgiving Service. I said, oh, National Thanksgiving Service is a national event. How can I preach at that one? And my children would, would die. Other people have been preaching at that program. Did their children die? Why are you telling me such a painful thing like this? And I told him, please, next time don't tell me that. And I walked away. Then one of our pastors was around and I told him the story. He said, ah, oh man, and you were so composed, you were still talking to the guy and laughing like that. I didn't see you angry. I told him, I said, my friend. Anger which cannot be postponed is madness. When somebody really makes you angry, your level of maturity is don't react at the same. 
at once. If you react at once, you are a madman. Just postpone your anger and leave it with time. So I'm not going to react to this. And I left it. I left it. Now, the person told me that then after 24 hours, I was here when that my pastor called me. And I'm like, what happened? Is there any problem? He said, um, oh man, the man who provoked you yesterday, I said, huh, what happened? He said, the man is dead. I said, I'm sure he preached for some people. I said, what killed him? He said, oh, the man was just in the house. He was standing with his family and talking. He fell down and died. That is why sometimes when you are talking, you have to be very careful. Nobody may curse you, but the words you yourself speak can kill you. I cannot go into that man's story because it's very pathetic. After that, something entered his family. Something hit one. Something hit one. Something hit one. And you know what? I was the same person who went into the family to help them, including even educating one of their children through university. I was the same person. And when they are in crisis, I was the same person who called them and prayed for them. You know, there, there are some aspects of my life normally I don't talk about. I don't talk about because I don't like a lot of things to be about me like that. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, there are many innocent people in this world and some of you just torment them with your words and your accusations and your beliefs and your fabrications. And the more you do that, the more you bring curses upon yourself. The more you, you, you rain curse on your own life. And that is because, you see, when somebody is of God, there are prayers they pray. And in case you happen to be standing within the, the, the range of the fire, a bullet will hit you, although they didn't plan it. So here is Moses, any time the Ark of the Covenant was about to be lifted for them to continue the journey, Moses will pray a prayer, rise, O Lord, where is the prayer? Rise, O Lord. And it came to pass. When the ark set forward, I want somebody to lift up your hand and say, Now, now. The, ark the ark is setting forward. The ark, the ark is my life. The ark, the ark is my family. The ark, the ark is my business. The ark the is my ministry. The ark is my nation. The ark is my city. The ark is going forward. From today, I am moving forward. My life is going forward. My life is advancing. The ark 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 is advancing. It came to pass when the ark set forward that Moses said, Rise up, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. So when you get up every morning and you are going out, the ark is going out. When you go to your work every day and you open your business office, the ark is going forward. When you get up every day and you sit in your car and you start the car, the ark is going forward. So if you don't know what to pray, when you get up in the morning, just say, rise up, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered and let them that hurt you flee before you. Because when you get up every morning, there is a Balaam standing on a mountain top and that Balaam is cursing you. Look at the number of people that hate you. Look at the number of people that don't want to see you. Look at the number of people that wish you dead. Look at the number of people that want to destroy you. That is why when you get up every morning and before you go to bed in the night, you declare rise up 
Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Somebody lift up your hand and shout this seven times. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, let thy enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Mokasuli Mahakataya. And where I stand right now, Father, if there is any enchanter or diviner, Balaam or Balak, that is speaking a curse against me, rise up, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Now, let me ask you a question. Who is God's enemy? God's enemies are those who are your enemies. Anybody who is your enemy has become the enemy of God. I pray in the name of Jesus that from today, your enemies will be God's enemies. And God's enemies will be your enemies. Come on, clap your hands and scream like I'm talking to you. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. That was a prayer. Rise up, Lord. Now, I believe that in the beginning when they said rise up Lord let your enemies be scattered they didn't even know what they were saying I'm sure the enemies they were thinking about were the Amorites and the people who are taking swords and spears and arrows to come and fight them but I don't think they were aware that there was somebody on a mountain called Balaam who had instituted altars to curse them and the man was establishing altar upon altar. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people that are employing the powers of altars against you. Against your house, against your family. They are praying for you to be divided. They are throwing spells among you. They are confusing your minds. They are making you make wrong decisions. They, they, they are just confusing you. And they are casting enchantments and divination. That is why Balaam finally failed and said, There's no enchantment and there's no divination. And that is why, you know what, people, in this, this church, Desert Pastures, Desert Pastures is a church that is in a place which is predominantly idolatry. In fact, I know the Christians claim to have the numbers and the Muslims do claim to have the numbers. But Upper East region is a region of idol idolaters. If you want the evidence, go to my village, that mountain down. Almost every house, apart from a few, have idols sitting in front of the houses. Until recently, when we prophesied and spoke and decreed, and they began to reduce drastically, until you go to some places and you don't see them again. <laughs> but Upper East region was predominantly idolatrous. And people, when the land is polluted with idols, don't fool yourself that they are not decreeing things against you. Oh. 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 I'll be, I'll be a very careless human being. To think that all these shrines around in the Upper East region, the fetish priests don't mention my name. No, I'll be very, very careless. And that is why sometimes I pity some of you who sit in church. Those of you who sit in churches and criticize your pastors and just talk and when you open your mouth, anything comes out. Including what you yourself don't understand. If you know the kind of spiritual attacks the pastor receives and must stand to come and minister to you, you stop talking the things you complain about. And they didn't call me and they didn't phone me and I was going through this and nobody really minded me. <laughs> that is your problem. When the person stands there preach to you for you in the morning and in the evening, what should he do again? So something is constantly releasing a curse 
No, they are releasing gases and missiles. And you can feel it. You can sense it. The thing is coming from everywhere. They are attacking. No. Can you have a shop in Bogatanga Market and say people are not cursing? Those of you who have got shops in Boga Market. Can you be in the ministries? GES, Ministry of Health, etc. Where people are competing for positions and for promotion. Can you be there without any spiritual attacks? Look at even your own family. Look at that your brother. I don't worship talismans all over his waist. Look at the idols people carry. And you are in the same place with them. They are releasing curses. So when you get up in the morning, rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. And that declaration, oh, by now it is shooting somebody down. By now it is bringing somebody down. Somebody come and shout it, rise up, Lord. And let thine enemies be scattered. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. As soon as the ark was lifted, when the ark was lifted, it was a sign that they are going forward now. And as soon as the ark was lifted, before the ark moved, they said, Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. You go to the front of your shop and you see they've killed a fowl or chicken and they've spilled the blood in front of the shop. Mm -mm. If you are the head teacher of a school, don't forget that somebody wants you to die and they'll take your chair. So when you enter the office, before you sit down with your cocoa seeking butt, because some of you sit down without even prayer, before you sit in that chair, you say, rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. You are going to move from your house and you sit in the car. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. You are going to travel to Accra. You sit in the OA bars. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. You are going into the labor ward. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. You are going to the hospital for consultation. You tell yourself, rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Because you can go to the hospital and meet the wrong doctor and they'll give you the wrong nurse. And that will be the end of your trouble. That will finally kill you. Somebody shout, rise up, Lord. Let thy enemies be scattered. And let them that hurt you flee before you. Let them that hate you. Now, let them that hate you. Do you think there are human beings really who will come up boldly and declare that they, they are enemies of God and that they hate God? So when he says, rise up, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered and let them that hate you flee. Now, do you think there are many people in our world, Auntie Julie, who will boldly say they are God's enemies and they hate God? All of them will say, we don't have a problem with God. We don't hate God. We, we, we don't hate God. And we are not enemies of God. What we hate is these Israelites and Jews. But what Moses is saying is that, anybody who is an enemy of Israel is the enemy of God. And anybody who hates Israel hates God. In the same way, fast forward, bring it into today. Anybody who hates a genuine church hates God. And anybody who is an enemy of a genuine church or pastor is the enemy of God. You know what Jesus said? He that receives you receives me. And he that receives me receives the one that sent me. So you know what people, you may be walking about thinking, you know what, uh, me, I love God. It's just all these pastors and all these churches and the way the churches do their thing. That is what I hate. Listen, I'm a human being like you, but I don't hate any church. I don't hate no man. I don't hate him. I remember the other day I was talking to somebody and this person was a politician. And they were talking about politics. And the way they do the politics in Ghana, you know, this group of people are against that group of people and this group of, of people are against that group of people. And what, whatever this person was telling me was wrong. I wasn't seeing it. I was seeing the wrong, but 
I was not going to attack the people. So she's like, Daddy, you, you are just amazing. You don't, eat. nothing moves you like that. I said, You know what? I've trained myself not to be negative. I've trained myself not to put bitterness and anger in me. Because you see, the, the, the line of demarcation between holy anger and destructive anger is very thin. Sometimes you can be very destructive and judgmental and you think you are pursuing righteousness. You become negative and everything about you is polluted. I pray for someone today in the name of Jesus. Don't ever constitute yourself into the enemy of somebody God loves. Don't ever constitute yourself into an enemy of a person or a church or a ministry that God loves. Because you know what? As soon as you become the enemy, you become the enemy of God. As soon as you hate them, you are hating God himself. Because it is God who made them what they are. It's God. No, listen. Maybe, 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 maybe I'm being subjective, but not objective. But I tell you, you can, you can, you, 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 uh, I don't think you can hate desert pastures, and God will not classify you as an enemy. No, no, no. If you hate this church, you are the enemy of God. Because how, how can you hate this? If, if, if you don't even appreciate spiritual things, if you don't even appreciate spiritual things. This kind of facility sitting in your town, if you hate it, you are the enemy of progress. And every enemy of progress is the enemy of God. And besides, and besides what is, if you are not an enemy of God, why are you so angry? Hey, I remember when we built this building, some people got angry. Where are they going with this big building? don't even want to see it. If you don't want to see something, it's very easy. Just look for charcoal or fire. Lie down and tell your children, you don't to put the charcoal or fire on your eyes. After five minutes, you won't see anything. Okay. So, so you see, I like good things. I like good things. When I'm driving on the Kanda Highway and I see that mosque that is sitting there, I'm like, ah, Daniel Fair. Daniel Fair. I like it. It's nice. When I see a human being who is not even nice, I force niceness on them. I look at the whole face and the whole face is discouraging but at least I can choose only the ears and say the face is a little threatening but at least the ears are complimentary. <laughs> now, when you see somebody who's doing business and the business is successful, you are very angry. You see somebody's breaking through. Some of you, even the way people walk annoys you. You come to church and there's this lady who likes dressing nicely, walking nicely. She, she. And they be now on anti tse bruni. They be ahuna she kia kia kia. bruni. You want every lady to be walking like you. Hallelujah. Amen. You want everybody to be like you? No, we will not be. We won't be like you. The way you are, we don't want to be like you. Have you seen that brother so and so? Since he got the new car, he has changed. He doesn't greet anybody. Why should he greet you? Why should he greet you? Even if he greets you, you are too low to hear. So do you think he must spend all his time greeting people like you? Who have no ambition to go on in life? You have no work. Listen, if the person gets a car and doesn't greet you, get a car, he will greet you. 
Get the car. Especially if you get a better car. He will leave his car and come to your car and come and salute you. Stop all this envy. And it's not like they didn't really greet you. Maybe they, greet, they greeted you, but you were so deaf because of your envy that you couldn't even hear. Huh? Rise, O oh Lord! Let thine enemies be scattered. And, and you know what, people? The line of demarcation between being Augustine's enemy and being the enemy of God is so thin. You know what God said? He that touches you touches the apple of my eye. He that touches you touches the apple of my eye. Listen, there are some people, the day you gossip about them, that is the end of your prosperity. The day you curse them, that is the end of your prosperity. Because, because you know what God told Abraham? He that curses you is cursed. And he that blesses you is blessed. He didn't say anybody you curse. He didn't say he that curses you, you will curse. You see, Abraham doesn't have to curse you because there is an automatic standing order that as soon as you curse him, even without he telling anybody to curse you, you are cursed in return. You are cursed. So you know what? The, the, the easiest way to be poor to be sick, to die, to be broke, is to curse people God has blessed. Hey, me, me slow blessing. Me slow blessing change the way you ask. So sometimes when people come to me, they say, oh, do you know this pastor is not of God? Do you know this man is not of God? Do you know this person is not of God? Unless God has told me clear, I don't want to use my own eyes and go and bring a curse on myself. That is why by the grace of God, I'm in Bogatanga and God is blessing me. And that is because you know what? I have refused to curse anything God has blessed. I have refused to curse anything God has blessed. I have decided to leave everybody to God. I told, I don't know whether it was my son Moses Luri, I was telling something. I said, you know what? I'm very hard on myself. But when it comes to other people, I try to be lenient. I don't, I don't want to mess up between God and people. And to see a draw. All these pastors, there's juju in what they are doing. All these pastors, they pass somewhere. All these people with the big, big churches. I have never seen a pastor who is criticizing big churches. Who has a big church? I have never seen a pastor who is who is who is criticizing pastors who are prospered, who has prospered, who are prospered. I have never seen a pastor. Who is criticizing people who go abroad? Who has gone abroad before? Yeah! Ministry! And that's the way they talk. Ministry! It's not about going to America. You can be here in Kanyonga and God will bless you. You don't have to go to France or go to Nigeria to say that God called you. You will stay in that village alone forever. I pray that you will start admiring things that are good. Start admiring people that are blessed. The easiest way to bless. You know what? Mommy did something yesterday. I was prophesying over Raymond. How God is going to bless Raymond. M. Prosper Raymond. Mommy said she was sitting down and looking at Raymond and receiving the blessing. And mommy decided, I am going to. Francis. Francis' wife. And I'm prophesying on Francis' wife. How God is going to bless him. Mommy is out there and she said, mm -mm, I need this blessing. Immediately, Mommy directed a seed of 10,000 Ghana seeds should be sold on her behalf. A seed of 10,000. Oh, but I'm sure another person will be sitting in the church. Mm -mm. That old Francis. That old Francis. Francis Sampun Kabona, a poor. So when will they prophesy over us too? Every day it is Francis. Every day. Now the Francis is not even there. Instead of them to look for Assisi, you know it's St. Francis of Assisi. Now the Francis is not there. Instead of them to look for Assisi, they've now gone even for Francis' wife. Ahoya. Even prayer and prophecy of our people is, is annoying you. And you yourself, you will never do anything to be blessed. 
if you are a fountain gate pastor somewhere and you want to be blessed, don't come to desert pastures and be envious. No, no, no. You know, some of our pastors can come here and be envious. Ah, look at that, you. Yay. All these big mirrors in the middle of the church. And all these. Ah, and look, we are in our own town. We want to roof our building. And we cannot. Am I roofing shit? Is my name called roofing shit? If you come here and see the blessing, the way to be blessed is to sow into it. I go to action and they are doing a convention and I write a check and I say, here is a check. Bless the convention. The last time I went there, I finished. The old man gave me an offering to come and help my ministry. I said, Papa, no. Sons don't receive from fathers. I don't want it. And you know what he said? Every month when we take our offering, we are going to send Pastor Eastwood 10% of the offering I'm tight. I'm sure Gabriel Asomboya wrote it down. 10% of action, tight and offering, is coming to Bogatanga. I went to him and said, Papa, no way. I will not be a son receiving tight and offering from my father's church. No way. It will not happen. I said, stop it. He said, Wadaur, my mate. Because my father knows that he's a man of war and he has produced one. We will fight over that thing forever. The following day come, he said, is one. Because of that thing you have done. Rejecting money. God is going to bless you and enlarge your course and expand you. And I told him, I said, Papa, what you have just pronounced over me is better than money. Listen. Any man you see God blessing, the person has a secret. Next two weeks, mommy and I are flying. We are going all the way to Columbus, Ohio. Pastor Rod Parsley is having his convention. I'm not a speaker. I'm going there for just two days. Two days spent. Me took one from here to Columbus. Now Messiah by London. Now me call convention. The two days. Papa is preaching. And I want to go and honor him. Let me just go there and honor him. Let me sit in the front row and hear the Papa preach. And after that, I will leave and go to Virginia and go to London. There is no way you can celebrate greatness but not be great. There is no way. And that's because most of the people that are great, it is God that made them like that. And they are the friends of God. If you make them your enemy, you have become the enemy of God. You have become the enemy of God. Rise on up and let thy enemies be scattered. Psalm 68 repeats the same words. Let God arise. Let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. And look at the way they are going to flee. As smoke is driven away, so drive them away. May anybody that hates you and hates God be driven away like smoke. How is smoke driven away? The wind just blows over smoke and drives smoke away. May God drive them away like smoke. May God be like the wind that drives away the smoke in the name of Jesus. And watch this. And as, and as wax melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. I pray in the name of Jesus that your enemies who are God's enemies your haters who are God's haters. May they be driven away by the wind and may they melt like wax before the fire. So let the wicked perish at the presence of God. Verse number three. But then let, let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yea, let them exceedingly rejoice. Lift up your hands right now. Begin to declare it. Let God rise now, watch this, watch this. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. 
Who is the enemy? Who are God's enemies? Now, I know that you saying God should arise. But you see, when you say God should arise, it doesn't mean God is sitting. What you are saying is that God, you have been patient over a long time. But I'm now fed up with these people's activities. God. Number one, let God arise means God lead me. Without you, I'm not going. Lead me. Go ahead of me. So you are telling God to go ahead of you because you must permit God to go ahead of you. So Father, lead me. When you say God arise, that means that God go ahead of this ark. Number two, you are saying that God, you've been patient with these people for a long time. But I'm, uh, truly, now I'm tired. I'm fed up with they disturbing me. Rise and let them scatter. Rise and let them scatter. Because they will torment me. You know what, what David told Saul? He said, King Saul, you have driven me away so that I'll go and worship false idols. You have persecuted me and driven me into the wilderness. And the more I am in the wilderness, the more I'm tempted to worship false idols. You know, the thing about persecutors is that they can disturb you until you worship what you don't want to worship. They can torture you. And before you realize, you have become a prostitute. You become a liar. You become a thief. You become an idol worshiper. They come torment you. And before you realize, you are worshiping another God. You've gone to join another religion altogether. Because of the way they are tormenting you. They can discourage you until your ministry, you've given it up. And you are just sitting in a room and crying. So today, Lord, anybody who is my enemy, I, 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 or anybody who hates me. Now you realize I'm not talking about who is God's enemy or who, who hates God. And that's because I am assuming that anybody who hates you hates God and anybody who is your enemy is God's enemy. So you pray it in the name of Jesus. God, rise. It's time for me to go to my next level. It's time for me to go to my next level. Lord, the act is moving. The ark is moving. I am lifting up the ark and I'm moving to my next level. Rise, oh Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Somebody pray. I can't hear you. If this is the way Moses and Co said it, God will not rise. Scream it aloud. Let go, let go. Arise. Hallelujah. Let go. Arise. And his enemies be scattered. Let go. Arise. And the enemies of desert passes be scattered. Let go. Arise. And our enemies be scattered. Let go. Nicholas Kuskitsi Lietan Dimpa Rosimisa 
Yada, Gaga, Kudima, Kudima, Adopte, Yaga Tuski, Yeksan, Samparuski, Ruka, Kakabaha, Kaleskeles, Shumba, Safia, Liskanaska, Kaliskemetoske, Ruka, Badus, Nanus, Ea, De, 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 Susa, Gade, Susa, Yagadoske Mosaya, Tadu, Tede, Debasi, Yagadabadagadaga, Egadebe, Tegebeha, Let God arise, Let his enemies be scattered, God rise, Your enemies be scattered, God rise, Your enemies be scattered, Somebody keep praying. Let God arise and your enemies be scattered. Somebody pray. Anybody under the sound of my voice who is being tormented by an enemy, like the way Hannah was tormented by Penina. If you have an enemy that is tormenting you so hard, and you are saying, God, avenge me of my enemy. Go to the altar and kneel down and pray. Oh, there are some of you, somebody is tormenting you too much. Some people are tormenting you too much. Rise, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Rise, Lord. Rise, Lord. Rise, Lord. for far too long in the name of Jesus anybody who wants your life anybody who wants your business may God arise and fight anybody who wants your ministry may God arise and fight for you In the name of Jesus, rise, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. The enemies of this house, the enemies of this ministry, the enemies of my family, the enemies of my life, the enemies, the enemies, rise, Lord, and let the enemy be scattered. In the name of Jesus, scatter them like the smoke driven by the wind and like the wax melts. In the fire, so God rise, 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 Lord, rise, Lord, rise, Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. You must tell God, rise, oh Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. If you sit down, nothing will happen. If you don't pray, nothing will happen. If you don't call upon the name of God, nothing will happen.
Somebody pray. You have two more minutes to pray. Pray. Two more minutes to pray. Pray. Rise, Lord. And a diviner. And an enchanter. Sharing borders with me. And an enchanter. Sharing a wall with me. And an enchanter. And diviner. Sharing a space with me. And trying missiles. Rise, O oh Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. Rise, O oh Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Rise, O oh Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Rise, O oh Lord. Yakadabadana namana namakataya. Yakadabadana namada gabaha. Yakadani namana namagadaha. Yakadani namada gabada gabahaya. Yakadani namana namagada gabahaya. Yamadani namana namagada gabahaya. Yakadani namana namagada gabahaya. Yakadani Yagatani na mana na magada gabahaya. Yagatani na mana na mana gada bahaya. Yagatani na mana na magada gabahaya. Yagatani na mana ne mika. Yagatunde kabanda kunta mataya. Likatanda konoske mosaya. Yabaduske mataya. Wherever my enemies are hiding, wherever my enemies are standing, with physical weapons, with spiritual weapons, with verbal weapons, with mental weapons, rise, O Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Rise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Rise, O Lord, let your enemies be scattered. Rise, O Lord, rise, O Lord, rise, O Lord, rise, Lord, rise, Lord, rise, up, Lord, and let thy enemies be scattered. Pray. In the name of Jesus, those of you that are at the altar remain there, and those of you that are standing in the congregation stand there, and those of you that are watching online remain online. But everybody lift up your hand. Those of you that are lying on the altar remain lying there. You don't have to get up. But everybody scream this after me: Rise up, Lord. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Let God arise, and let His enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate you. Flee before me. I decree right now. Rise up, Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. I pray. Any man, any woman, any child, anything within my territory sharing borders with me that is casting spells at me. Rise, oh Lord. Let your enemies be scattered. Any enemy that is using physical weapons spiritual weapons mental weapons verbal weapons against me rise Lord let your enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus rise oh Lord and let your enemies be scattered in the name of Jesus shout an amen now watch this my eyes also shall see my desire on the wicked that rise up against me. And my ear shall hear my desire on the wicked that rise up against me. Get ready to hear the good news of what will happen to your enemies. You don't want them to be destroyed, but they have destroyed themselves by being your enemy. They have destroyed themselves. Listen to me. 
God can refuse to bless a whole land because they hate God's children. Jesus told his disciples something. He said, any town you go to and they reject you, shake the dust off your feet. He said, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah than for that land. I know places in Ghana and the history, the history books are there for you to see. I've read a lot of history about some parts of Ghana. There are some places in Ghana when the missionaries came at first, these missionaries attempted to settle down in some towns. In Ghana, I don't want to go too close to some of the places. And the people rejected the missionaries. And when they rejected the missionaries, the missionaries went to another land. The lands that received the missionaries up till today are blessed. Those that rejected the missionaries, there's no development. Be very careful when you reject the things of God. I pray in the name of Jesus. Your level of blessing many times will depend on the way you accept people God has sent. If you receive David, the way Nabal received David, it shall not be well with you. But if you receive him, the way the Shunammite woman's husband and the Shunammite received Elisha, it shall be well with you. May the Lord bless you. Go back to your seat. Oh, come on, somebody clap your hands. Glory, 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 glory to God. Glory to God. Online folks, thank you very much. Those of you in the house, thank you so much. I want everybody to sit down, pick up your offering today. Be a blessing to this house. Be a blessing to this house. Be a blessing to this house. This morning, I want to challenge somebody to sow a seed of just 100 Ghana cities. Just 100 Ghana cities. Just sow it. Just sow it. Just sow it. Just sow a seed of 100 Ghana cities and be a blessing to this ministry. You know, anytime we open these doors, electricity current is going up. Anytime, anytime we open these doors, cameras are running. Anytime we open these doors, people are working. Anytime we open these doors, something is happening. And one of my sons told me the other day, he said, Daddy, it's about time we did the air condition in the desert pastures. I agree. It's about time we did the air condition. But I'm telling you, the air condition will come with a lot of cost. Number one, to install it, and number two, to run it. And um, by the time we talk about air condition, Director Gabriel Asumboya will begin to cry because his electricity bill is going to go up. And I'm wondering whether when we put the air condition there, the members will increase their offering. You, you know, sometimes when the unbelievers are talking, some of you who are in churches have to respond. One of my sons sent me a message today and said, Daddy, we can grow the Fountain Gate churches by allowing the pastors to preach on Love Revolution TV. We should just put them on Love Revolution TV so that they can grow their churches. And I was telling mommy, I hope he can rather go back to Fountain Gate churches and tell them, go and support the Love Revolution TV. Because he has turned it the other way around. He's looking for preaching space for people who are not involved in supporting the TV station. Of course, individuals are involved. Pastors who are individuals are involved. The chairman of Fountain Gate Chapel is involved. But denominations, or let me say local churches of Fountain Gate Chapel, their pastors leading them are not involved. Like maybe a church saying, you know what, every month we want to contribute so and so amount to support the um, LRTV. I think even desert pastures are not involved. Do you have monthly money for LRTV? Desert pastures? No. So even this church, of which mommy is the senior pastor, <laughs> mommy is the senior pastor. Pastor Mike is the executive pastor. This is the director of finance. No, there is no monthly seed from Fountain Gate into LRTV. Not even this house. Not even here. Hmm. 
Me and Kasa mean to me. Yeah. But the other pastors and the director of finance could have come and said, look, you know what, we want to. Only that as for there's a pastors, even if they give me as the money for LRTV, we don't want it because they will give it to the LRTV and finish and come back to me and mommy and come and collect more. This will go. They will go and give their 10,000 to LRTV and at the end of the month, they will come to me and say, oh, they are short. Uh, me and mommy, can we support them with some, some 80,000? So they will give 10 and come for 80. So Taria and Liri, keep your money. We don't want it. Don't go and hold some, don't go and hold some, some, some meeting and then come back and come and present something which is not presentable. Okay? Everybody take your offering, find the basket. Because I must close by 12. Aaron has a watch. Put your basket. Put your offering in the basket. And those of you that are giving online. No, okay. I said those of you that can sow the seed of 100. So if yours is 100, continue coming. If it's not 100, change it on your way. Anybody sowing the seed of the 100. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Stephen Dinko, the Lord bless you. And then everybody else, take your offering and start coming. Somebody sow the seed of 100. Everybody take your offering, start coming to the basket. And then those of you that are doing it online, the Lord mightily bless you. Let me do my offering. Glory to God. Kola Shanda Makosenie. Me wonyamia. Oto fua weni. No kwarinya. Amin. Oh. Trini sang. Womaku dini. Nina ramu. Ewa mata fuso enti o o kan mi hu mi winti mi suro bribi o nyami tofo ye yi wa ye tada o nyami tunfwe nyami tunfo ye yi yi wa ye tada o nyami tunfwe nyami tofo Ye yi wa ya da da O nyami tunfwe nyami Tunfwe Da da O nyami tunfwe nyami Tunfo Ye yi Iwa ye Tad Somebody clap your hands Praise Jesus praise Jesus Are you happy you came? Has the Lord blessed you? Somebody make sure you are still giving your offering You are still sowing your seed whilst I'm finishing the announcement. Yesterday, I announced these three boxes of books, and the books disappeared just last night. But the good news is that two people did it from the house, and one person did it from outside, which is a blessing. Two people did it from here. And uh, the books, I've released them to Pastor Chris. I'm not seeing Pastor Chris now. I think he's held up in some things, um, but I've, I've told Pastor Chris what to do with them, and I hope he will pay heed to it. Um, I'm not seeing him, so um, I don't know whether he's going to do what I told him to do or not. Um, so, um, 
who was it? I was talking to somebody last night and I said, it's very, very difficult sometimes for a church to understand me. Because normally my mind is far away. Okay. So that is, those are the boxes of um, settlement warrant. And um, I think those are the last boxes we have in Ghana. Nicola, is that correct? Those are the last boxes we have in Ghana. The only place you will find settlement warrant now is London. And when I come to London for pneumaticals, every one of them must disappear. Okay? So that is the end of it. And then the envy. I want to encourage anybody who is listening to me right now to go to www.amazon.com, especially if you are listening to me from outside Ghana. Go, go and get a copy of the book from www.amazon.com. Dot Amazon.com, get a soft copy and put it on your tablet and begin to read it. Because you see, I'm just following the notes. Those of you that have the book, I want you to go and pick up the book and go to the chapter on Balaam. And anytime I finish teaching, you want to go back to the YouTube and, and play the message again or Facebook and play the message again. And then you also want to go to the book and be reading the book and be praying as we go along. Okay? So the Lord bless you mightily. And after this meeting, um, I would like to meet um, Pastor Solo and Administrator on one or two things. And um, of course, if Brother Gabriel too is here, yesterday I gave them some homework to do. And I need to get that homework sorted out about the Samek house. The Lord bless all of you. Aaron, do you have a time? What is the time? 11.59. So I'm, I'm one minute, one minute to 12 o'clock. So the Lord bless you and I will see you in the night. God mightily bless you. Take good care of yourselves. Let's please be on our feet and put our hands together again. Let's appreciate the Lord for the life of our father. God bless you, daddy. We love you. Just say a short prayer for our father that the Lord will replenish strength unto him. He's ministering morning and night, morning and night for 21 days. Having Zoom meetings in between, having administrative meetings in between, meeting us personally for meetings. Pray for him that the Lord will strengthen his body in the name of Jesus. And in this prayer mode, we want to take our declaration for 2022. In 2022... I am fulfilling my purpose by having ownership of properties, by taking my rightful position in the community, by exercising the power of the Holy Ghost, and by attaining perfection in Christ Jesus. Amen.